We are everyone. We represent everyone's pride and everyone's pain. We will not let our struggles define us. We will let them bring us the opportunities to let forgiveness wash away the pain. And in doing so, we become the voices of our humanity. And today is that day where our voices will be heard. You, hey, in essence, you become the first casualty in the process. So when my students come to me in the beginning of the year, what I say is, one of our mantras is that your responsibility is to be in this program, so always remember that, that you are to stand up for those who stand alone. That is part of your, of, of your mission. And also your mission is to identify the people in this building who are not identified. We call them the <coughs> invisible uh, ch ch students, invisible children, who are, who are because of maybe uh, bias in their lives, because of tragedy in their lives, they chose to somewhere in their life start to shut down. Our role, in many respects, is to recognize those who start to shut down and bring them back in, to reconnect. Because we know, one of the things I know from training and dealing with violence and nonviolence is people who oftentimes commit violence against somebody else do so because there is no connect. So when I get to know your pain, I can share, you share with me, then I see you as an individual, as a human being, and we can make those connections. So a great deal of this training is focused on making those connections. And this is who we are at Wagner High School. And, and, and I am blessed to be able to, to, to live my life with, with this crew. So I, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you the voices of, of our humanity, students at Wagner High School. All conflicts are what? All conflicts are, Tori? OK, what's the key word in that statement? Need. Need. Right, basic need. All comes to the result of a basic need not being met. Why is that important to you as a, as a mediator when you have two students coming in with a situation? Why is that important for you to know, Jada? Because you have to recognize the root of the conflict. It's for, it's for you to recognize the root of the conflict. What was the statement I used when I said the origin of the conflict? What is this what? Say it, but. Wait, 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 wait. How did I say it? What is this a boot? What what is this? <laughs> Before that, what is this what? Yeah. 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 Okay, say it again. What, what is this really about? One more time. What, what is this really about? about? Okay, that's the key. What is this really about, okay? What this is really about is what need is not being met, okay? That's what you're thinking. They're not even into that. They're not even in there. They're, they're in the situation because they're in what we call attack mode. Now, what is attack mode? Explain to me attack mode. Jamie. Angry and they're ready to fight and, like, be... Aggressive. Okay, so they might be in a heated situation. They might be in an attack mode. When they're heated, they might be agitated. What else? They're not in a state to be, like, to have a um, conversation. They're still overwhelmed with anger. Okay, you know that, okay? When they come into a mediation, you know they're in attack mode, meaning they're agitated, they're feeling anxiety. They're not really at a place of dialogue, not yet. That's your job, okay? That's your job. You understand that? You ever sit at the mediation table? with four my mediators who've been through two years of training, when there is a conflict or a crisis in this building and the school would like it resolved, it comes to this room. And we shut the door and it is a confidential private mediation between professional mediators who received the same exact training that I received at Columbia University word for word. And honestly, I can honestly say they do it better than I do. Uh, they are well skilled, well accomplished and well versed. How do you begin to bring them down to a place of dialogue? How do you bring them, bring them down? Shen. Um, you like ask them what's the problem. Good. What skill are you going to utilize? What skill are you going to utilize to bring them down to that place of dialogue? Use attending skills. Can anybody say attending skills, please? Attending, attending skills. skills. Can you hear you? Attending yes. skills. Can somebody please explain to me what attending skills are? There's three parts of attending skills. What's one part? Active listening. Without calling it out, Marwa. Active listening is to listen to the person and actually understand where they're coming from. Okay. Why am I asking you to speak in this sort of manner to me? Two reasons. What's one reason? It shows your position, like you're listening and you want to know. Yes, that's good. What else is another reason, Devin? It shows that um, what they're saying really matters to you. Yes. Okay. 
So I mean, when you speak to me, you also have to believe it, okay? Because you're going to be teaching this one day. So active listening is exactly what you said. Active listening went out into rough. That's one part of the tennis coach. We don't put like the pressure on one person. We make them both understand where they're both coming from. And, like we ask them, like you know, if you're in this person's position, like how would you react? And like they would react to maybe the same way, differently. Like then other person gets ideas, like oh, I should have done that. You know, like it's really ridiculous what I did. Like it's not really. It seems to me that you felt quite angered by the fact that he bumped into you, am I correct? Yes. How do you have felt if you were in her situation? I'd act, excuse me, you bumped into me. I would have just got straight mad and started yelling. She could have took a different route, but she didn't have to go straight into straight yelling. No, but they're my books, though. Please don't interrupt them. Um, what would you have felt? What do you feel from that response from him? He said he would politely respond back to you. I feel that it's just a bunch of crap. How do you feel about her response? And please, no vulgar language. Thanks for sharing with me. Thank you. She wanted to keep her garage about a little tap on the show, but she could have got over it and left it alone. But she still wanted to hold this garage. So. No, but I almost fell and I almost got hurt. Please focus on me. I understand that this is a heated situation, but if we can't keep it this way, we're going to take it to the deans, and I really would not like to do that. All right? Do you both understand this? Well, the first time we did a mediation, it was one of those typical he said, she said type things. It was Asmira and I. And um, actually, it was on and I first. We had two mediations that day, and then on had to finish one by himself while me and Asmira had to go into the dean's office and do a total different mediation. I was personally a little nervous <laughs> because it was like my first mediation and I was leading it and then I had to do it with Asmira when I was just tried doing it with On and uh, it, it, it worked out well. I mean, Why? It, because we used the skills that we have learned during class and we were trained to do and we brought them down to dialogue, got them to forget about the past and move forward and just put everything behind them and just come to a common ground and an understanding. Right. I always say if you stick to the to the skills, to the steps, what will happen? You will Solution. succeed. You will succeed. Stay in the skill level. And that's what you're trained to do. There's no uh, one A, one B. There's one, two, three, mm -hmm. four, five. Stay in it. Because many times I'll get calls from other schools and say, George, we had a situation. Can you come here and help us resolve the mediation that went wrong? And I'll ask them, what, what did you do? And they go out of the steps. Mm -hmm. And I always say, that's your first mistake. You, you went out of neutrality, the role of neutrality. You, re you reacted to their problem rather than responded to the problem. In a mediation, do we usually have the disputants sitting side by side? No. What do we usually have? Something between them. Something between them, a physical barrier. Not that we expect anything to happen, but it's good to always have that little bit of a, of a fence between the two. Okay. Do we have them looking at each other in a mediation? No. No. That usually happens towards the end of step three, but definitely in step four, which is when we start seeking solutions from them. Okay. I'm the mediator. I remain neutral at all times. I will not take sides. I'd appreciate it if everything said here remains confidential and you don't tell your friends because they tend to amp things up. Um, it, this is strictly voluntary. You do not have to be here, but your other alternative is the dean's office where you lose all control and you're looking at a possible suspension. This should take about 30 minutes. If it takes any longer, you'll have a pass written for your next period. Um, there's a process called caucusing. If I feel that you're not being completely honest or upfront with me, is it okay if I take you outside to speak with you privately? Nora? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Um, please respect the ground rules. Please do not interrupt each other, and please no put-downs, okay? No interruptions. If you disagree with something the other person is saying, please write it down and we will discuss it. Okay, who, who would like to begin? I was in the hallway, and I had two books, three books in my hand. When I was walking, he pushed into me, and my books dropped. So I turned around to see who it was, and I don't know him, and I was looking for, so, at least for him to help me and to say sorry, but he just walked away. Okay. So what I'm hearing is you're walking through the hall, and you felt disrespected when Ishmael bumped into you, and your books fell to the floor, and he just left the scene, okay? And Ash, what's your side of the story? See, I was in a rush to class. See, I can't be late to my AP scholars class, yes. And um, I happened to bump into her, but um, I was in a rush, so I couldn't 